Welcome back guys. So here it is, the king of action cams, pioneers, trendsetters, call them whatever you want. Whenever someone mentions an action cam, they'd ultimately assume a GoPro. Fun fact, GoPro was founded back in 2002, which makes 2022 their 20th anniversary. So in a way, the Hero 11 Black is approximately 20 years of research and development. So what does that actually look like? Well, it looks like this, and this is what it does in 10-bit color. So yeah, first things first, my last experience with the GoPro, believe it or not, it was with the Hero 5. So yeah, really long time ago and I've got to say, this is near perfection. It even just looks like it's capable of anything you throw at it. Knowing they've been literally releasing one every year, it gets hard to keep track of what's different. I mean, aside from this six year generational gap from the Hero 5 to this 11 Black, then of course, the difference is night and day. So. Do forgive me if I'm coming off a little enthusiastic than most. To mention a few, I love how it now comes with a front screen and this very responsive 2.27 inch rear display. I love the solid latch they've, they've got going here and the foldable mounting points and even the replaceable front lens. But if you're coming from the Hero 10, if I'm honest, it's pretty much the same. So don't expect anything different. So yeah, maybe the whole releasing a new model every year thing could be taken down a notch. I feel that camera brands just need to pull a James Cameron, like go quiet for a good few years, innovate, then come back with a blockbuster. But of course, that won't be a good business model, especially in a highly competitive market with brands such as Insta360, which is fully modular. DJI just released their Osmo Action 3, which I have with me, and we'll be talking about that in a separate video, and not to forget Sony with their RX Zero series. But still, I think GoPro could actually do that, disappear for a bit, and still make an impact whenever they come up with something new. The menu system for one is just so easy to use and familiarize yourself with. Only a few minutes on this, you'd pretty much figure out your way around it even if you've never used one before. So from a user experience standpoint, this is very well done and very much invites any newcomers who've never owned an action cam. Because as a camera that comes with only two buttons, like most action cams do, the menu experience has to be a good one, which is a lot more difficult than it sounds, especially if its main functions is to be rugged above all else. So in a way, this huge exposed touch screen at the back could be more fragile than it claims to be because it's still glass in the end. Seeing some of these photos online of cracked screens on the Hero 10 is just terrible, which is probably why they still sell a protective case as painful as seeing an LCD screen on, the, on a DSLR or mirrorless. Yeah, I dropped my camera once when it was on a tripod and I don't even want to talk about that. It's still something I'm getting over. What I do love, what I do love about this, uh, it's how the menu system just works. It is clean. I love how everything is just placed in one screen, albeit it is a big screen, but it works. and. That's the one thing I've noticed that GoPro has um, improved on the most in, in the way usability just makes it much a better experience as compared to like something of the Insta360. But even without the case, it's still capable of up to 33 feet underwater and I just love that you could just swipe up or down on the left slider to change frame rates and I think that would be very useful if you're interacting with this camera on the go like popping it off its mounting to capture something cool in slow-mo then switching it back immediately to normal speed. It's about the little things like having all of your resolutions which tops at 5.3K at 50 FPS, aspect ratios and frame rate settings segmented in its own page, while lens angles can be chosen by swiping on the right slider from linear plus horizon lock 
such as this footage of me karting, all the way to Hyperview or a 12 mm focal length, which I found to be way too wide for my liking and stuck with just Superview or 16 mm which was also shot on another karting track. But yeah, I truly scratch my head a lot when it comes to reviewing some of these action cams because there's so much, there's only so much action you can do before you feel less inspired to just go do something else. Which is an, also another reason why I believe they fitted a front screen now from the Hero 10, thinking people would be vlogging on this camera, which also makes me cringe a little. Don't get me wrong, it's a great addition to have because I think by now, most creators who record on the go like car commentary shows or interviews might take advantage of this. So, I mean, such as our own Making the Cut series on our Features channel. So yeah, do check that channel out. And also having the option to just power this through USB-C and having it run for as long as you require is very helpful for those situations. And also factoring the front screen, as I mentioned before, when you might have the camera facing towards you and backed against the wall or away from you. So yes, having a front screen helps very much. So one of the things I was hoping for an improvement in the GoPros are mostly on the microphones and I do believe that there is some improvement, especially from my experience, which was way back to the Hero 5. I'm not much of an action cam type of man, but seeing this GoPro Hero 11 just amazes me. GoPro's Hyper Smooth is pretty much as smooth as it gets while running shots in lower light conditions. Some warping might be more visible when it comes to those conditions, to which also just does not perform as great as I was expecting it to when compared to other action cams I've tried in this past year that doesn't do well in low light either. I know I shouldn't be expecting too much out of a 1.19 inch CMOS sensor but still factoring how this is a lower megapixel count of 27.6 active pixels compared to Insta360's 1RS with a 48 megapixel sensor. I was rooting for this to perform better, but I think that's just a flaw across all action cams anyways. So maybe in that matter, GoPro might need to consider this as an opportunity to pioneer something else, which most brands struggle with when it comes to low light. If you really must know how much this would cost compared to an older Hero 10, this Hero 11 Black, well, it's exactly the same, which retails at $350. But you do get the new 27 megapixel uh, sensor in this one. Other than that, you're basically looking at the same camera aside from a faster reading speeds of 120 Mbps at 5.3K and 4K. But I think if you got anything lesser than a Hero 7, this might be a considerable upgrade. But anything later than that, I think you're not really missing out on anything. It's nothing groundbreaking per se. But yeah, I really do believe that the Hero 12 coming out next year might just be another similar story with the tiniest improvement. And to be very frank with you, not something I'd be as enthusiastic comparing this to that and knowing that I've already had some experience with this camera. But yeah, that is my full review of the GoPro Hero 11 and yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions and yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't get enough footage just because karting is my only action thing I do I guess and yeah, see you guys in the next review, peace.